to, let's let's just talk about a couple other things that are happening because um, definitely went in a really cool direction this evening. But I wanted to share um, a little bit of energy about something of how we feed our body. How how can we start to utilize? So I present this because we, for the most part, are choosing to stay plugged in the matrix while we while we go through our ascension processes. We're not choosing to go live naked in a mountain with sadhus. <laughs> we're not choosing the fast track. <laughs> and we're definitely not choosing the path of the agoris. <laughs> That's a little beyond. <laughs> so now within this um, is an understanding that we are choosing to stay plugged into this reality. So how do we work with it? And this is going to understand that we are dealing with with the electricity. We are dealing with different uh, modalities of electricity within our reality, and that these electricities are actually playing upon our system, primarily affecting not only our nervous system, our etheric body, but also affecting the way our DNA is mutating. So I'm going to go through a couple of things here just really quickly and share a couple things with you guys. And then what I will do is create a PDF of the uh, PowerPoint I'm going to share with you guys so that you can download some of these images that I'm going to share with you as potential ideas for things for you to work with. So what we want to really realize is that humanity is going through epochs and evolutions. And we understand this through the gate 22 of understanding that uh, that we were the Hyperboreans at one time and then the uh, sorry, the Polarians and then the Hyperboreans and then the Lemurians, the Atlantean time, the Aryan time. And that as each epoch and progression happens, what we are really doing right now at this next evolutionary leap in our consciousness is you will find there is a hunger in our hearts to go back and study the ancient texts, the ancient wisdoms. So go back into um, the Druids and the Celtic teachings or the Egyptian teachings or the Vedic teachings or the Mayan teachings, whatever is calling into your heart. There's a lot of individuals on the planet being called to go look back at the ancient wisdom teachings, but what we are doing is rereading them now from a new understanding and higher consciousness. Now it's not just a, uh, a superstition or, oh, well, we pray to this God because we want the crops to grow. Now we're actually getting to a place where we're stepping out of the superstitions and the basics of it. And we're starting to look at the actual spiritual mechanics of what were they actually really saying? What were they really talking about? Now, something interesting that came into light is um, that it was known that on an energetic level that when the Spanish flu happened, there was a lot of deaths that happened at that particular time, but that was also the time when the electricity was really being introduced to the world. And so there's an understanding that every time a new technology gets introduced to our bodies, that our body has to learn how to adapt to it. So let's bring it really current. We've been grumbling for a little while about how to deal with 5G. First it was 4G, then it was 5G, then it was like, how are we dealing with these energy directed technologies? How are we dealing with ARP? How are we dealing with all these uh, electromagnetic and, and gamma rays and the ultraviolet rays that are being targeted? And the important thing to know is that each of these actually does affect our DNA and the way our DNA absorbs the energy from them and then starts to rewrite new patterns. So the moment a new technology gets introduced to the planet, it automatically starts to change the human genome on a deep level. Now, the interesting thing about that is that here's a new perspective. That if we can start to learn how to adjust our energy systems in our body, we will actually be able to accelerate the of way our body can take on these gamma rays and ultraviolet rays and these different G, um, uh, the G technologies that are coming. And as we 
acclimate ourselves to this, it's what we're doing is we're beginning to increase the spin of our body to harness more of these photonic energies or uh, ultra waves or gamma waves. This is going to happen no matter what. So we can grumble about the technology that's happening, but on the other level, as we are spiraling through the cosmos, we're also starting to get more frequencies from the sun. So no matter what, even on an organic level, there's more coming. And it affects us. We feel tired, we feel dizzy, we get uh, electromagnetic sensitivities, we become, you know, children become very agitated with these energies. And so now the energy is actually to realize what if we could begin to shift and change our spin rate of our body and also the way our etheric body. So the etheric body, again, is key. It is how energy is translated into our body and then moved through our chakra systems in our body. The etheric is everything. And, and when we learn the language that communicates directly to the etheric, we can actually adjust our etheric body so that it creates a way to... Uh, transmute the frequencies coming in so that they're not disruptive, but they actually harmonize for our system. And a very advanced thing that has really been coming forth is that we could actually then shift the energy systems in our body where we could actually be energized. I know this sounds really weird, but that we could literally be energized by 5G. <laughs> We could literally be energized. We could learn how to, to take whatever's energy is in our atmosphere around us and begin to move it through our etheric body in a way that it transmutes it in order for it to actually be something that assists the ascension of our genetic coding within our body. Now, what is really happening, this is, again, this is where we start to learn that we want to be very mindful of, again, what we place into our body, and that even if we're um, ingesting uh, the, the air, the food, um, even if there has been injections or any of these types of things, that what we can realize is that there is ways to actually begin to offset or uh, change the tonal frequencies of these things within our body so that they're actually going to harmonize for us. But one of the most powerful energies is actually utilizing symbols and sigils. And when we start to realize that there is a magic, if you will, to being able to utilize sacred symbols and sacred geometry and the sacred way in which our eyes take in information, what we are communicating directly with is we're bypassing all the physical body and we're actually communicating directly to uh, the etheric body and it then translates through to the astral body and then begins to create a Christ field within our system that actually uh, creates the, the transmutation of any frequency so that they become beneficial for us. So let me just kind of show I'm going to share it this way so that I can do this. So very, very quickly, I'm pretty much just going to share with you guys some symbols that you can use. Again, we want to work with our seven etheric uh, bodies. There's seven layers to our etheric body. And all of these are the ways that energies are transmuted into basically creating our physical reality. So in a lot of ways, I, I love, uh, again, that saying of that we're as real as a rainbow because these are really like the seven uh, rays of a rainbow that could be coming in to transmute this energy for us. But now as we learn to take in symbols, I'm going to share a couple here. This particular symbol right here is very, very powerful. This is called the Ekasha, the E-K-K-A-S-H-A, -K -K -A -A, the Ekasha. This particular symbol right here is from the Kilanta, and I have two different symbols on here. So as you can see, this one actually represents the three sound tones on the outside. So if you look at, I'll see if it makes it bigger. Yay! So as you can see, um, 
the bands in here. So you have the gold ray, the magenta ray, and the blue ray coming from the god seed realms. This actually represents the god seed code right here. And it has the light language within it. And then you can see the emerald order or the emerald code within here. And then as you look in the middle, this is something referred to as the Roosh. And it is the God seed itself. So I have actually included a very a separate picture here where you can actually begin to tap into just the Roosh. And as you allow yourself to place these symbols around your house, if you were to meditate and let your eyes gaze upon them, this is actually very ancient technology on this planet. Mantras and symbols are the oldest technology on this planet. And so I'm just coming in in a new way, showing you guys why is it working? Because these codes, when you stare at them, are directly affecting your etheric body. So as you stare at them, you start to have an understanding to some degree of what is the, what is the meaning of them. But in a lot of ways, what you are embedding by looking into this is the Crystalla or the Christ code within your field. And as the Christ code, the power of Christ overrides every negative arconic energy in any of the polarized realities. It is the most powerful energy, but it only works if you believe in it. Now, some two other symbols that are very, very powerful is going to be the Star of David or the Merkaba. So this is the platinum uh, star that we see in our pineal gland when we do our 12th dimensional shield. This represents the, the Christ consciousness at, or the 12th dimension. So having the symbology that you can utilize. And one thing to really understand is there's a lot of symbols that we are going to be called to work with that have been used by beings that are utilizing them inappropriately on the planet. And the reason why they're using them that way is because they work. <laughs> so if we can actually kind of remember that, they're, they don't use sigils and symbols just because they think it's cool. They're actually using them because it's a technology that's very powerful and it starts to actually work through your etheric and astral body. This one is the Lotus of Life. This is actually representing the eternal living light flame within creation. So if you were to meditate and see this, this is actually the corrected flower of life. This would uh, be the one that is eternal and is not restricted within a finite reality. Some of the other symbols to actually meditate upon are actually going to be the platonic solids. Each of the platonic solids are going to connect us to the base elements within the second dimension. They connect us to the realms and the beings within the second dimension, and then they also are the building blocks as they move up into more complex patterns that actually start to connect to not only the dimensions within our chakras. Let's see if I can move this. So they are going to represent uh, the different, the different uh, dimensions and, and fields that we can start to connect to. And as you start to meditate on these symbologies, they will pull you into the dimensions in which they represent, and then you will be in those realities. So there, it's a little bit different than parallel realities, even though we do have parallel selves within them. But the physics are different. The beings are different. Who you meditate with these symbols is also going to kind of reflect this. So as you get to kind of touch into this, you can actually go a little bit deeper with which each of them are referring to. So the tetrahedron, as we know, is actually, um, it's the triangle with the four sides within it. But as we utilize this, it's the element of fire, but it's also uh, connected to the paths of the planets Jupiter and Mars. It's also going to be uh, one of the patterns that starts to represent breaking out into the God, God consciousness. So when you start to tap into these, the dodecahedron is again another really, really, really powerful one to connect to. 
And when you really stare at it, it looks a lot like the Bucky ball um, or uh, I forget the other uh, carbon element that it is. So it really starts to take in the vibrational energy of, of the divine cosmic mother within this. And it has 12 faces upon it. So it's the sacred 12 and it connects to the uh, template of earth and Venus. So you can begin this I'm going to have available. Now, other symbols that are very, very important are going to be variations of the Trinity um, Celtic knot. Rem remembering that this is actually some of our blue ray symbology and and ability for us to hold the energy of the Trinity. So this is going to be something that whether you want to look at it as um, uh, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Divine Sophia, uh, the Divine Mother, and, and then the, uh, the Holy Spirit. Each of these is going to have some element to really holding the energy of the Holy Spirit within there. And then if you were to look on the energetic synthesis site, you'll actually see that her kind of symbol that she uses for her site is actually very similar to this Trinity uh, Celtic knot within here. This again is the eternal connecting uh, symbology that shows the, the sacredness of the Trinity. Uh, so this is again going to be very similar to uh, the Trinity, the, the gold ray, the, the magenta ray, and the blue ray as far as the founder flame or the founder rays. Now, another symbology that is actually very, very important for us to connect to and that you can utilize is actually going to be the Ankh. The Ankh is actually uh, the universal life code hidden in physical matter. Its astrological connection is Venus, but it is actually an energy that represents the complete energy of the universal tree of life. So when we work with our 12 tree grid, um, when we work with the energy of the tree of life and basically the eternal life flame, um, this image on the right hand side is actually from Lisa Renee's site, Energetic Synthesis. And it actually shows that our uh, tree of life is actually interfaced in multiple ways through the solar reshik shield. And that solar reshik shield is actually what's creating a connection up into a solar reshi field or the 12 deep platinum field here and then that loop of the energy through the solar dragon rings is actually creating the top loop of the arm so it's very uh, a very powerful cosmic it is actually the true uh cross signature and when you start to really look into how our kundalini flows through our body it actually flows in the symbol of an onk through our body another symbol that is very important and something very powerful is going to be the om so the one on the left is more the hindu om the one on the right is the tibetan om and you know this is something i'm, I'm just going to say personally to invite you guys to really kind of tap into and to really tap into the power of om how to work with om how to listen to the om um you know and it's actually it's interesting because when i was quite young i was guided to get the Tibetan Om tattooed on my back. So I've always had that on me pretty much most of my life. Um, these are symbols that I actually just wanted to share with you. This is an, uh, this comes from uh, someone, uh, she's not on the earth plane any longer. She transitioned a bit ago, um, but she was a divine being that was really bringing forward some really high information. Uh, her name was Lilia and she had uh, transcribed a bunch of light language and these codes are actually quite powerful to work with and as you get the opportunity to work with them they are going to symbolize energies of whether you want to pull in energy for forgiveness structure power compassion breath of life um, non-conditional love or we call it unconditional love freedom uh, divine union um, her main symbol she would use all the time was unity uh, and then, of course, there's the uh, non-conditional or unconditional governance. So these are symbols in there that actually are very, very powerful. The way that these kind of symbols and sigils work for us is that when you place them on things, they again, they don't communicate. Uh, they don't communicate to our 
uh, to our conscious mind. They actually are communicating and putting those messages in our shield. So I've talked with you guys a little bit before about how our 12th dimensional shield is actually really important, but it actually holds our records and memories of whatever we've been through. And that's why sometimes there's kinks in our armor, kinks in our shield that kind of let things still get to us. And so when we start to put the sigils and the symbols within it, it actually really helps us to start to fortify our shield. So um, uh, just to let you guys know, I've at recently added quite a few new books onto the books and PDF section for you guys to check out. Uh, and the sacred symbols of Mu is actually something really quite profound. I'm just going to slightly scroll through it so you guys can have an idea of it. But within here, you're going to find the ancient cosmologies from our motherland of Mu. I can get to some of it. Um, you guys have seen me post this one quite a bit. This is the cosmogonic uh, uh, diagram, but this is basically the symbol of our pathway home pathway back to our eternal light or God source. Um, of all of them, this would probably be one of the more important ones to connect to. Uh, they have a few other ones and then he goes into a description. So this one was the Babylonian representation of it. Uh, there's a Chaldean right here, representation of the diagram back to God source. And then here's the Hindu diagram of the journey back to God's source. You can see them all being quite uh, similar. And then if you were to scroll through here, you're going to actually find um, ancient inscriptions that have been utilized as the ancient languages. This one's actually quite a fascinating book. I'm just going to scroll down uh, because he breaks down some of the actual symbols and the words in here. So as you see them, you can actually decide if any of them really resonate for you. And as you begin to meditate upon them, then you can begin to just see if you want to embed that representation. Most of these are going to have to do with um, connecting to the natural realm, the natural forces, um, connecting back to the to the rays of the sun, connecting back to the God source. So again, uh, this is going to be a really powerful uh, resource, and that's on the books and PDF page if you want to work with it. So all of these are things that are actually considered um, sigils or symbols or ways in which you can work with codes in order to begin to uh, start to create ways to add these to your world around you. So what you would do again is place these different things on maybe your water containers, um, the things that you are looking at, your computers or any of these things. And we'll go into this a little bit more at another time. But I wanted to share this with you guys right now because as you go through this transformational energy right now, the most powerful energy that we can utilize is going to be frequencies. Whatever symbol that you might be connecting to, see if it's connected to a planet, see if it's connected to a chakra center. And if it is, find the frequency of that. Whatever you're resonating to, you're naturally being drawn to it because that's going to help you balance something that might just be a little off balance in your body. Then let yourself meditate on it, tone on it. And if at if there's any question at all, utilize OM. OM is the most important sound within creation. As you begin to build that, what you are building is your Christ body. The more you build your Christ body, the more fortified your energy becomes. And it becomes a luminescent energy that can actually absorb 5G, 6G, whatever they're going to throw at us. It's going to start to absorb it into a way that we can actually move it through the etheric body. It can pulse it through the chakras. We'll have the ability to actually transmute it so that it's healthy for our body and it won't be creating a lot of this uh, low energy and tiredness for us. So you guys are troopers. I love you guys so much for <laughs> sticking, <laughs> sticking this late with, with so much.